Jack Ward, and David Alt, the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid of audio drama, without the dramatic freeze frame death scene at the end. Final destination from predetermined coordinates. Final room with episode four of season two of The Cleansed. Final Rune Productions presents The Cleansed, season two. Episode 12, The Light. This was the day we reached the threshold. We were just about to the lighthouse, a tall stone monolith overlooking two worlds. On one side was the familiar path of the river. As dangerous as the river was, it was still something I knew and understood, unlike the great seemingly endless ocean ahead of it. This was the point of no return. Of course, it all kind of was beyond return. As soon as we left the refuge, there was no going back. But there was something different about this part. In the cold walls of the lighthouse, there was something to learn. If only I could keep my ears open to hear it. Okay, come on everyone. We're trying to reach the building. Too late, David. Keep walking, Luke. Oh, I'm scared. There's nothing to be afraid of. Keep following these nice people. No! Ah! No time, son. You've got to shoot the wolf. No! Forget about her. You've got to save yourself. You can't nick me! Then you'll die. No! Yes! Shoot it! I won't! <laughs> nice work. My mom! October 17, the year of our Lord 2052. Near as I can remember, the light still shines, the ocean is clear, power turned on briefly today, third time this month. Always there are voices, savage voices, usually just the preacher man, but today the dark man was on as well. Another quarter wood split, about all I'll need for the winter. I'll be stacking it in the new shed. Only four cords. You just don't need to burn it like you used to. Not with winters like these. 
85 degrees today, swimming weather. But the weather turns on you too. Some days, so hot you sweat your balls off. Next, the northeast winds come off that bitch the Atlantic at 40 knots. Today, I... No. I'll be damned. Today, I saw people. My legs are starting to remember what it was like in Saudi. Trouble keeping up, old bones? <laughs> As I recall, I was always the one working you into the ground. <laughs> yeah, well, the tables might turn. We'll see who collapses first. Hey, we're getting close. Yeah, river widened up ten miles back. Right, and listen. Yeah? Stop and listen. Oh, sweet sound of the ocean. I can smell it, too. It all comes full circle. What goes up the river goes back down. So we're close. Yeah, just past this stand of trees and we should be able to see it. There it is! The lighthouse! That's it. And it's still shining. And you know this guy. I mean, he's not like... Tully? No, he's not like Tully at all. Good. Then what's the weight? Sam, you think you can keep up? Not so fast there. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Hold on. I thought you said this guy was friendly. He is. State your business. We seek safe passage. To where? Borderton. Pardon? We seek passage to the city of Corinth via the town of Borderton. I thought you said. What the hell's wrong with you, boy? He's telling the truth. Our business is urgent. And who the hell are you? Mark, son of Chad of the Penobscot dwellers. First Sergeant John Prophet, U.S. Army. Sam Miller Brenner. We're from the refuge. Sound like crazies to me. What's wrong with your refuge? Makes you want to go to Borderton. Can we talk? Maybe. I could have a mind to, so long as you nice folks leave your guns at the door. No way. Sam. Oh. Yeah, look. You had me outnumbered by a long shot. The least you can do is ease my mind a little bit. We'll do that. Right? This is happening all too often lately. Play by his rules, Sam. He's an old man. All right. We're coming. Slowly now. Two at a time. I think he means us first, sweetheart. Oh, you want to dance, John? If we need to? Yeah, we'll dance. We look like what you had in mind, old man. Stand over there. All right, two more. You, son, I've seen you before. I usually come with my father. Right, to trade. Good, we'll parlay. Stand with the others. Last two! And look at this, a teenage girl. You know what you're getting yourself into, honey? I know it all too well, sir. Careful calling her honey, mister. She's got an attitude. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Well, your lot's crazy, but I don't think you mean me harm. Oh, thanks for humoring me. Can't be too careful these days. So good. We're all here. Let's talk. Now, now, no need to rush things. I've got old bones. I'd just soon sit if I could. What do you all think? I was just going to indulge in a spot of tea. Um, sounds great. Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to Fort Point Light. You don't mind your Earl Grey mashed up with a little metal Just make it last. I don't suppose that means you have coffee with chicory around here. Yeah, I'm a miser, but no rich man. Sold mm -hmm. my coffee a long time ago. So, <clears throat> tell me about your plight. Must be desperate times to get you to leave two safe places up the river be headed to Borderton. 
Hell, in the old days, you had to drag a mina kicking and screaming down there. And that was before the mob ran the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed that much. Yeah, I've gotten a little more over it, that's all. <laughs> Regardless of what you think, the family is a group of reasonable people. You can negotiate with them. They're good for the terms of their contract. You just need to understand that money lubricates the wheels. Money buys protection. And a lack of money lands you right at the bottom of Mystic Bay. Yeah, real charmers. They are, they're ruthless, but they're reasonable. Unlike the Republic. Republic? Who's that? Uh, they're the old guard, come back again. They're headed up by an old Navy Admiral. They have a fleet of jets and an aircraft carrier. They came to Corinth. Corinth? What you used to call New York. They came there and kicked me out. We had a council there, and as soon as the Republic arrived, the council didn't give a damn about the protection me and my men provided. They turned on us and took up with the Republic. And why? Because the Republic had electricity. Electricity, huh? And nuclear power coming off of their ship. Now don't get me wrong, we tried to get the coal plants back up. We had crews digging coal and engineers working on the plants. This, uh, Republic. They mixed up with the Jesus freaks. Who? No offense, mind you. I believe in Jesus myself, but this is a little much. None taken. Now, occasionally, I get a burst of power up here and fires up the TV and the radio. It's always, well, these two fellas. One proclaiming the glory of Jesus Christ Almighty, talking about how he is the image of the Lord and Redeemer and how he's back here on earth to lead us to the march of Armageddon. Good guy, I think, but little much. The other fella, well, he represents the dark side. Either of them have names. Well, they talk about the lamb and the wolf so much, I couldn't really say. Ah, no, no, that's not right. They do got names. Like that story in the Bible, Paul and Saul. Saul? Yep. yep. Now that I think of it, I swear that's what he said. Captain Saul. But that was months ago. Now he just calls himself the wolf. Wolf? Last I heard him, he was punishing someone. Don't know what for. He wasn't nice. John, are you all right? Saul. Now I understand. Just when almost everything was sorted out perfectly, things started to go off plan. We knew the Citadel could not last forever, but Saul thought those wretched lying scientists told him that there were many years before the power would dwindle and that we would need to unlock the power of the big bombs which John had stolen from us down in the soup. We had to act. Our control of everything was like a house of cards and the Citadel the table they all stood on. And now one leg was about to kick out. Enter. Saul? Out with it. I can tell by your face it's not good news. What, did they attack another one of our buildings? Who do I have to desecrate on television tonight? No, it's, uh, it's nothing like that, Lord Saul. Oh? It's the Citadel. The Citadel? Take me there immediately. hell is that racket? Sir, it's it's in your honor, sir. Silence it! Yes, uh, yes, of course. Quiet! Lose the music! Isn't this quaint? You're all lined up to see me. They feel honored, Saul. This is the first time you've set foot on... Don't just stand there, you idiots! Fix something! 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Assemble below decks. Report to your commanding officer. There will be a check of personal goods at 1400. <laughs> yes, yes, yep. sir. On our way. On our way. Thanks. I don't understand, Saul. Order is the only thing that matters on this ship. They've been following rules for 15 years. If you violate their expectations... They will have to overreach from their little pea-sized brains and think for themselves. I know. That's dangerous. But if anyone was paying attention, maybe we would not be terminally screwed! Understood, sir. Let me show you to the engine room. Oh, oh, sir, sir, thank, thank you for coming. I understand there's been an incident. It's, it's the outcome we, we warned everybody about. This plan was not made to last forever. <laughs> That's all. We're low on fuel. Well, then. Fine. No, no matter at all. What? Where are we going to find refined plutonium? In the sewers. What? The lost goods? Yes, all the goods that John stole. We have them tucked away, safe and sound, waiting for a day like today. Thank God. I don't think it's God you need to thank. Is that all? Uh, yes. Um, uh, well, um, no, um, um, maybe. Um, you, you understand, that's, that's only a temporary solution. When all that's, all that's gone... Nothing to worry about. We're in negotiations with the family. They've lucked into some warheads of their own. We need Abraham. I, I, I served with him, yes, but I don't know one-tenth of what he knew. If you, if, if you could... You could just find him. We will find him, rest assured. Thank you. Are we done here? Uh, um, just one more question. How are things on the mainland? Fine. Why do you ask? Uh, I haven't set foot on it yet. It, it's, it's close to 16 years, and, I, and I'm a little tied up in my work. You need some R&R? &R? Perhaps that can be arranged. When this is all sorted out, Naturally. Naturally. You would not believe the comfort electricity has brought back to people. Those who suffered for 15 years without lights, elevators, stoves. It's almost like a utopia. The world is simpler than it was in the before times, which means people can be happy. That sounds wonderful. It is. Goodbye, uh, D Daniel. Goodbye, Daniel. Should I arrange for transport for Daniel? That won't be necessary, Lieutenant. I have other work for you. Yes? Assemble your best men and the strongest. We need to go retrieve some things from the soup. It was strange being back in the soup. After all this time, I felt like a stranger. We followed this guy, Sachem, who was kind of creepy, I gotta say. He had, he had these dark holes where his eyes were supposed to be, and he smelled like there were dead rats rotting in his clothes. But he was all we had to lean on. We were walking down into parts of the soup I'd never been before. Parts where they had all kinds of stories of monsters you'd find down here. And stories of people who were the biggest monsters of them all. Uh, you recognize any of this? Uh, no. Not anymore. Back there a little. My people never went this deep before. Yeah, mine neither. There are parts, well, I don't know if I believe them, but they talk about strange things being down here, inhuman things. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. I'd be more afraid of twisting your ankle or getting lost or something. It's a long way back to the surface. Hey, um, Sachem, how much further are we going? Not long, <laughs> not long. Well, why does it matter? It's all dark. I don't know what I think about him. He ain't right. 
Could you get us back topside if we had to go? I think so. There were a couple twists back there. Not sure how much further I can hold out on this leg. Hey, there's something up ahead. <laughs> People. People are the greatest monsters of them all. <laughs> is this it? Sachem goes no further. Why is that? Sachem does not care for people. You cozied right up to us. You're different. You smell the topside. What if they're not the people we want? They're just a, a little fire there, no guarantee. They're the people. You will see. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thanks a lot. Follow a blind man deep into the soup, and he knows 500 feet off when there's a campfire. I don't get it. Hey, smells like... It smells like they're cooking food. You got an appetite? Starving. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. We mean you no harm. Yeah, we mean you no harm. Here's my club. We got Amos here. Amos Quick Knife. And this guy is an original alpha. Check this out. You just stick there while she comes to check you out. She? Queen. Since when do we have a queen down here? A few years back. She stabbed the last guy in the back with a railroad tie. She keeps all the subies in line. Amos, we thought you were dead. Yeah, might have been. But I've had this guy around to watch my back. You know the rules. Turn your back on us, and the door closes. Look, we don't mean you trouble. We just need a place to hide out till we get our strength back. We'll be moving right along. You. Who are you, and why should I let you live? The name is Lucian. Have a little bit of trouble, Topside? You could say that. And you decided to bring it down here? No. We're just hiding out. Like Amos said, we're going to be moving along. You followed. Could you be? I don't know. Look, can I sit? I'm hurting here. No, you will not sit. You will be going back out into the soup and blessing me for not killing you. Queenie, come on. Did you bring any food? Any supplies from Topside? N no. We don't need any more beggars. Sorry. The soup has been hell lately. Hey, hey. Yes? How old are you? I mean... During the break-in. You're old enough to remember the Mollies? Yeah. I kind of remember you. You were just a girl then. During the raid. Don't bring that up. Did they leave their mark on you? They were some mean ones. I said, don't... You were there, weren't you? When Manhattan 11 came down. I remember. When the roof started coming down, and there were all those kids, I was with the Molly gang trying to get them out. We didn't get everybody, but yeah, it was you. You and your sister, wasn't it? I'm sorry it happened like that. I said, don't talk about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it went down like that. Get out of here, now. We did what we could. I went back for her. Go! Hey, maybe we got something we can offer. What? You guys heard of Paul? The man who's been talking about the coming of Jesus? Oh, Amos. Oh, no. Is that why all the killing's gone on in the sewers? The bad man is in charge of the topside now. But he won't be forever. We're trying to stop him. And we suffer when you play. We've heard the fire makers and the screams and the big bangs. I didn't believe it either at first, but now I do. A big war is coming, and in this war you have no choice. You are with the good guys or the bad man. 
There's no sitting it out, Queenie. But after that, once the good man beats the bad man, we're going to be free, Queenie. Free forever. <laughs> Sounds nice. You don't have to believe, but you can listen, can't you? Then we'll be on our way. If you don't want to listen for yourself, listen for your people. And you, tall guy, you believe too in this... What does he call himself? Paul. You believe in this Paul? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. We can take you to him. What do you say, Queenie? Grego. Yes, Queenie? We still have it? Yes, Queenie. And the Whisperers, do they still say what they say? Great rewards. Great rewards for the delivery of the Big Bang. The Big Bang? You found it? That's the big bomb Paul's been looking for. That's what we've been fighting the wolf for. Quiet. We've told you too much. You know where to find him, this Paul? No. Yes? Uh, sort of. We're on a mission for him. We sort of head out down here. Now listen to me, original Alpha. You have been living in the soup since the days of the Mollies. Do you hear me? Yeah. We are the rest of the Subies. The soup is all my people, our people, have known. We've lived here in the dark cold, living off the scraps of fat from the land topside. We have lived in the shadows of this land, hungry and desperate, but alive, in peace. No one walked the sewers so we did not know. Fifteen years we have lived like this, since I was a babe, since you were a boy. Yeah. Now the soup has turned on us. There are monsters that walk our tunnels. There are fires and screams from all within, from topside to all the way down to the deep dark. We have gone down and down, and there is no more down to go. We've been cornered. Our back is to the last wall in the soup, and here you are standing in front of us. Do you understand? Yes. The soup is no longer safe for us. We must find a new place, a new home. And you tell me this man, Paul, he will take us in? Yes. You who saved me, but did not save my sister. You say this, you swear this? Yes. Paul will take you in. Bring the Big Bang, Queenie. Yeah, well, he's looking for that. Queenie, what are you saying? Quiet, Grego. Okay, man, what is your name? Lucian. And you know how I call myself already, Queenie. Queen, no longer. We are a rambling people. It's okay. He's a nice guy. I hope that's so. Well, follow me. We'll fix your leg. I want to try and get down on paper how it felt at the lighthouse. It was something, something out of time entirely. It stood there, strong and stone and sentinel, the same as it had been in the before times, unlike everything else which was ravaged and emptied and ruined. It was just a monolith holding strong. It looked like it might continue shining on until the end of time, just spinning round and round and shining light onto the cold, dark waters beyond. Yet, it was also something different. A gateway. So here we all were, standing astride two worlds, two possible paths, which would lead us to very different futures. One, turn back. One, go further. From the beginning, there was a sense of the inevitable. We knew deep down we would continue out past the last glowing lights of the lighthouse and into the dark, raging waters of the sea. But things were starting to get different for us. And that was scary. I already told you about Luke. Luke was always quiet, but at least he'd confide in me but now he seems awkward around me. When I go up to him while we're walking, he drifts back to Mark, 
If I ask him about his dreams, he changes the subject. He says nothing is wrong, but something is wrong. And then there's Sam. She is as cold as ever. And John, who looks like he has seen a ghost. Though, I think he has seen a ghost. I think there's a lot he's not telling us. And I think we're going to be really mad when we find out what he's been hiding. But on the other hand, I trust him. I have to trust him. He's the only one left to trust. He's the only one with that kind of confidence. The only one who has any idea where we're going, what we're trying to do. We followed him this far, and the thought that John might not know what he's doing, well, it was too terrifying for thought. We had to believe. You asked for no little thing, fella. I know, but our matter is urgent. The safety of the entire region is in peril. This gang of the Republic, you think they may be sending folks to tell you? How's that? Well, some mean-looking men been passing through here. I don't go down the door, but they've been around. Used to get all sorts of riffraff prowling Maine when the world first broke, but nowadays, usually quiet. Strange to see a band of five fellas traveling up river. Five? Bless my eyes gone on me already, yeah. Five. We met them already. Three. One gone away. Strange men we can't account for. They don't feel right to me. Those types of men will keep coming, unless we stop them from coming. Yeah, I don't like the way the wind is blowing. Seen enough trouble in my time. Thought it was all behind us. I thought those of us who were left around here might try being friendly with each other. Try to keep what nice stuff was left in the world. Well, no such luck. Look, the old blood's still pumping. Once we defeat the Republic, and Saul. Yeah, once you defeat those two, there's gonna be some other trouble. Some other fire needs putting out. What do you think a soldier's for? To keep on fighting, because that's all he knows how to do. That had on my old bones. So why are the kids here? No need for them to be taught fighting. You can talk to us directly, sir. You're a little spark plug, ain't ya? We came of our own doing. All of us, including me and my brother Luke. Hey. Mark II, we know what we're getting into. I hope you don't, darling. I hope you have no idea what can happen. I know damn well. Don't talk down to me, old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess whose daughter she is. And how about you, son? Your dad eager to part ways with his only boy? I am a man grown. He has no say over me. Though I have come, I'm his mother. Six against an army. No offense, but you already look half dead and you ain't even left the woods yet. We're not looking for your advice. We just need your boat. I'll never see her again if I go by your way of thinking. By the looks of her, if we don't take her, she'll be rotting into the ocean anyway. Dow, CC's a little weather beaten, sure. Mention has some cobweb, maybe. But the hollow sound, she'll get you where you need to go. So can we take her? I don't quite say that. Yeah, let me think on it. I'm gonna go smoke another pipe of that god-awful sage. Check the light, then head to bed. We can talk in the morning. Sure. Good. Thanks for coming. It's been a mighty lonely 15 years up here. Glad to be here. Getting chilly. It's October. Yeah. Days are still hot. But these nights... It'll get less fun to travel. That's true. We'll make it. So. So. So, Sam. 
Nice to see you. Hmm. You'd think we'd get a chance to talk, seeing how we're on a mission with each other day and night. We talk plenty. About the trivial stuff. You really interested in talking about anything else, John? Since when are you interested in anything other than the mission? It's not that simple anymore. Look, John, I went along with this thing because I couldn't stop Maria and Luke. Don't think I came chasing after you. So you don't care about the mission? I'm too old to get worked up about what the world does next. What are we going to do? You made the same oath as me, Sam. To protect the U.S. Constitution, to defend liberty. Yeah, and that all went out the window when the shit hit the fan. I'm not a soldier anymore. Hell, we weren't such good soldiers over there. That was different. Things were crazy. I'd say things are pretty crazy here. Not like that. Not anymore. Things have calmed down. Damn it, Sam. If you could have seen me in Corinth when we were rebuilding, we were so close. People worked together like I'd never seen. They all go belly up in the end, John. Some new dictator comes along and they hail him like a savior. That's why I'm getting to not like people. You liked your life in the refuge, though? Yeah. I suppose I did. David? He's a good guy? What the hell do you care? I'm just trying to talk, Sam. Well, maybe it's better when you shut up. David's fine. Yeah, we butted heads at first, but... Somehow, the guy you survived the end of the world with kind of grows on you. So he took all this stuff with Maria pretty well? Damn it, John. Why do you need to pry the lid off things that are long dead? Just making small talk. Oh, since when does John Prophet make small talk? Yeah. Sorry. Don't know what got into me. We can talk about our plan. You've got one, right? The guy needs to think about it, but he'll give us his boat. We'll be in border town in a day or two. From there, we retrieve Abraham and negotiate for the rest of the nuclear arms, which are in the hands of the family. From there, we evaluate our options for getting into Corinth. Hmm. The situation there has apparently changed. And there goes John, leaving a trail of fiery madness behind him. Saul. He's someone I trusted for a lot of years. If he betrayed me... Anything could have happened. Tough business. Now, I don't like the word of this Paul guy, either. Sounds like someone's coming up with excuses to rile the people up. And with the Republic having all those guns, it could really be messy down there. You like messy. It's all I've ever known. <sighs> yeah, I should just go to bed. No rest for the wicked, John. Hmm. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey. Oh, hey. Couldn't sleep? <sighs> Scared to. They're back, huh? The dreams? Yeah. What do you think it is? Too much walking? I guess so. What's wrong, Luke? I told you, my dreams. No, between us. We used to be so close. There's nothing between us. Then why don't you talk to me? What are you talking about, Maria? You and Mark are spending all of your time together, and I feel like the odd girl out. Is it all right that I have a friend? Seriously, Mar. <sighs> Forget I said anything. I'm happy for you. Really. Can I? Yeah, sure. It's pretty. Yeah. You know, we're not all that far from the refuge. Can't believe we never came here. <laughs> it feels far. Yeah, I suppose a little. Are you still scared, Maria? Scared of what happens next? <laughs> of course I am. I'm not. I mean, I mean, I am, but 
but not as much as I thought I'd be. The farther we go, the easier it gets. We have to cross that big ocean next. Uh, someone else will be captain. <laughs> I know. That's kind of how I feel, like we're the crew on John's ship. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? I don't know. It's a thing. We could still turn back. No, we can't. It'll be easier today than tomorrow. I wish it were that easy. I wish we could just forget that all of this was happening and go back to how it was. But then you'd never have seen the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe. Hey, there you are. Hey. Feels like I'm always interrupting something. Am I? Uh, no, take a seat. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's so big. You ever been out there? No. But you've been this far before. Yes, recently. My father started taking me after I turned 14. Every year we come out here to trade our surplus produce and game for food from the sea. Cutler there. He makes uh, salted fish, pickled lobster, <laughs> clams. Stuff that really livens up a cold winter's night. Sometimes he has more exotic trade. Brandy. Chocolate. Even guns. Where does it all come from? He told us that uh, boats still show up from Europe once in a while. Well, not so much anymore. Europe? Really? That's all he says. Life goes on out there, I guess. Life goes on. Hey, there's something I needed to say. Yeah? We don't know what's ahead of us out there. Pretty much anything, right? The only thing that is going to save us is if we stick together. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. So I propose that we seal it. Right here. We make a pact together. The three of us? As the new generation that had the bad luck to inherit this ravaged piece of dirt, yes. No matter what happens to our elders, we must stick together. Do you agree? Sure. Don't just say it. Do you truly, in your heart, agree? Will you stick by my side no matter what happens? Will you not turn your back on me? Yes. Luke, I'll do anything. I'm in it with you guys now. No, Luke, that's the wrong attitude. You need to embrace your inner warrior. <laughs> no, really. You have the power to transform yourself. The three of us together, we are the future. And John? He's on his own journey. We will follow him, for now. Does that mean that if something happens, you'll... That doesn't mean anything other than that this pact is among the three of us. No matter what happens to the others. John, Sam, our mother. So Mark, how do we do it? Cut your palm. Like this. Oh. <sighs> and by blood we seal this brotherhood and and sisterhood, um, packed to, to stand by each other's side, should hell on earth be unleashed. Hell on earth, huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is kind of weird, Mark. You don't have to do it. No, no, I'll do it. <sighs> Let's seal this pact. We're together. We are a family. Even if all the rest of this falls apart. Even if all the rest of this falls apart. Even if all the rest of this falls apart. The Cleanse was written, directed, and produced by Fred Greenhalge. You heard 
Kate Gurney as Maria, Philip Hobby as Luke, Ian Carlson as Mark, Paul Drynan as John Prophet, Susan Riley as Caitlin, Kim Dakin as Sam, Robin Monroe as Koi Dog, Tim Sample as Cutler, Brent Ascari as Saul, Dylan Chestnut as Zeke, Joe Swenson as Lawrence, Nathan Speckman as Damien, Adam Marujo as Republic One, Johnny Speckman as Republic Two, George Ledoux as Damascus, Cole Amarello as Amos, Reggie Hodge as Lucian, Eric Moody as Paul, Daniel Noel as Job, Janice Gardner as Queenie, Michael Dix Thomas as Sachem, Rachel Flyinger as Bridget, Jamie Schwartz as Michael, Christopher Riling as Bartender, James Herrera as Abraham, Rebecca Mishrel as Young Luke, Lisa Muller-Jones as Luke's mother, Burke Brimmer as Chris, Chris Newcomb as David, Additional voices by Gary Hauger, Christine Marshall, Alicia Gorenson, Scott Marco, Allison Slattery, Nicholas Solvey, Hope, Hannah, and Molly Brock, Mirabai Iwanko, John Capron, Seth Dusso, Tim Bates, Ryan Fecto, Alicia Bailey, Ashley St. Hours. And I'm Richard McGonigal. Field sound by Randall Farr and Jod Bowles. Production assistance by Megan LaSala, Peter Campbell, and Sam Rappaport. Sound design by Matthew and Monique Boudreau at Oral Stage Studios. Original score by Hubert Campbell. The song Run For Your Life was written by Adam Swiderski, performed by The Yesterdays, Copyright 2005, Seeking Rex Music. This production was recorded on location at the North Dam Mill in Biddeford, Maine, and Wolf Pine Farm in Alfred, Maine. Studio recording at Mind's Eye Productions. Funded in part by a grant from the Maine Arts Commission, an independent state agency supported by the National Endowment for the Arts. Special thanks to Tom Harms and Amy Sprague, Carolyn Goslin, Doug Sanford, the City of Biddeford, Amy Titcomb, Bill Dufries, David Turner, Fortunat Mueller, Peter Stickney, Jay York, Loki Clan Wolf Refuge, Samantha Mason, Coffee by Design, WMPG, Road Microphones, our amazing Kickstarter supporters, and other fans. The Cleansed is a Final Rune production. Find more audio stories at www.finalrune.com. That's F-I-N-A-L-R-U-N-E dot com. Once upon a time, there lived a witch named Alba. I am afraid chiropractic isn't covered for centaurs. Who had an apprentice called Magnus. Your neighborhood is full of smug, smart-ass woodland creatures, and they all hate me. And a fairy assistant named Holly. A team that cares! A team that heals! Together! And together, they tended to the king. I will not live with snakes on my head. The queen. Oh. How dare you address me like that? And all the people of the little kingdom of Farloria. I want a test for fatsoplasia. Alba, I think I have the plague! The plague, you say? Alba Salix Royal Physician. A fairy tale comedy for the ear from Forgery League. Visit ForgeryLeague.com. Just fill out this patient information form and Alba will see you in a minute. The Sonic Society Season 10 is written and produced by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music provided by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society through Creative Commons licensing. The Sonic Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Jack Ward and David Alt. The Butch... <laughs>